Hi everyone, it's Justine here from House of Mahalo. Thanks so much for joining me. So uh, today I want to do a little bit of a shop your trash uh, with this piece of trash. <laughs> um, so this, um, I think I got some wallpaper or fabric samples in this uh, for free. It's um, Danelle. <laughs> and um, yeah, this is what they came in. So it was sort of this envelope thing. And then these things here gave me an idea. So um, yeah, we're gonna do something with this and I want it to be some kind of like flip out pocket ephemera holder type thing. So the first thing that I wanna do is get rid of these two flaps because I'm actually gonna uh, take inspiration from those, but I want to have a pocket, a gusseted pocket that goes the whole way across the bottom. And then I want the top flap to flip over and we're gonna have a policy uh, closure. Um, but essentially, you know, these flaps uh, gave me the inspiration for this project, as well as the envelope shape. So, um, just gonna carefully, carefully, as carefully as I can, <laughs> make a straight line uh, by cutting those off. Oh, sheer concentration. So I hope you're all doing well. I realise again I've just kind of like dived straight into it, but I'm excited. <laughs> Another project I'm excited about. Um, the Shop Your Trash Sessions, they are some of my most favouritest <laughs> videos that I do. Uh, just because, you know, you can put some some real creativity into what you're going to do. And it's uh, I find it really interesting what we can make with just things that normal people... <laughs> Nah, we're normal, but you know, people who don't do this would just throw those things in the bin and um, I find it so fascinating what we're able to do with these things if we just look at them a different way and, and all the rest of it. Okay, right, so that's my first step. So I think I want it to open out this way because this is where I want my policy pocket to be. So I've got this uh, scrapbooking paper. It's just paper. Uh, a thick paper but it's not card so I thought this would be good to use across here so to be honest I think the easiest thing would be to just put the glue on um, and then just kind of fold it around and if I need to end up and if I need to put lace along the spine or something to cover up any cracking in the paper then I can do that um, I have run some tape along the base as you can see there just to sturdy this you know it's 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 card but it's um it doesn't feel particularly thick so I thought that would just give it a little bit of sturdiness so I'm just going to do one side to start me off and I'm just going to lay that on I'm coming in a little bit from the edge because where it's brown paper underneath I don't mind a little bit of the the paper showing I just thought this would be the easiest the easiest thing basically and it gets this whole sheet used up because we're going to use this off cut for my little flap there and I have had this in my stash for a while so it feels good to give it a purpose and I think actually this sheet came in a um came in some um I got some scrapbooking papers from a second hand charity shop and uh there was a load in there and some of them just went straight onto eBay because I wasn't interested in using them and um, somebody else can can get joy from those but um there was a lot that I did enjoy using and that were you know quite me and uh, yeah this was one of them really pretty you know vintagey flowers and letters kind of kind of look but as I say, because it's paper, I thought it would be good for this project. Okay, so now I'm just going to uh, cut around this. I'm using like blunt cheapy scissors that I don't really care about because it means that I don't end up um, cutting into the actual card underneath or I'm less likely to. 
you know, compared with using sharp scissors and they get a bit gluey doing this so you know it doesn't uh, it doesn't bother me them getting a bit gluey these ones so actually I rarely use my big Tim Holtz scissors anymore because um yeah I just I don't really have use for them now it's sort of it's one of those things isn't it sometimes you don't have use for the things that you buy but hey hey Right, so as you can see, I've got a little bit of a spine in the packaging, which is nice. So that'll allow that to just bend around. And then any edges and things, I can just get in with my art glitter glue. Cool. Yeah, nice. So now I want to get this flap. Now, question is, does it fit? Oh, just. So I'm going to put some glue on the flap itself. Hopefully you can see see what I'm doing just along the flap and I've got this little spine here so I want to cover that as well I think so let me just get that glue on I'm using the Kalau glue because it gives me sliding room and then I'm just lining the edge of my paper whoop, as best I can with the edge of the envelope but I might need to come in with my scissors a bit a bit differently, but hey hi. Great thing about using stuff like this is it's an easy project where you can just, you know, cover cover things up. Yeah, I don't mind that it's on its side or anything. That kind of stuff really doesn't bother me at all. I think it for me it adds to the collaged kind of look. Okay, so I'm just going to cut around this little uh, flap and then I'm going to just run my scissors around the whole thing, just make sure everything's neat and tidy. And then I'll probably give the whole thing a really good ink. So I'm just going to hit pause whilst I do that. And when I come back, we'll start working on doing something with the, with the middle. Okay, that's all of it glued and inked and ready. So um, I want to start with the policy pocket that I said we were going to have in here. Um, so I've just been trimming down a Tim Holtz piece. Um, I had to do my, use my big cutter so I had to do it off screen. So all I did was I measured across the bottom here in between the two inner score marks and it came to just under six inches. So I went for a seven inch wide piece because I want this to be a gusseted pocket. So that's the first step. The next step is that I want this to be the pocket plus also the fold over down piece, hopefully, if it works out. So in order to do that, I don't want my pocket. Um, if I hold it here, you can see my envelope. This is the amount that I've got left over from my 12, 12 inch high piece of paper. So I don't want my pocket to be bigger than that because otherwise the flap over won't cover the pocket. Probably doesn't make much sense, but hopefully it will once you see what I'm doing. So that's about three and a quarter inches roughly. So I think if we cut my pocket to be three inches high, that should be about right. And I want the bottom of the paper to be the, the pocket. So three inches. check that is actually straight yep yeah, think so <laughs> hope so and then the rest of this will be my flap down or at least uh, m most of it not necessarily the whole thing so um right let's um I want to do the scoring and cutting together really so if I place that there so I'm going to have a hinge at the top and I don't really want to lose too much of this cursive text at the top. So if my hinge goes about there-ish, like so, as you can see that's way too long. I don't need it to be that sort of length. So if my hinge is here, I'm just going to look to see... 
I think if I cut it just underneath the word alphabet, I think that will be about what I'm after. I'll go a little bit above, no, I'll, I'll go underneath alphabets. I'll go a little bit beyond what I think I need, just to be sure. Okay, and I've got a nice scrap there. Yep, yeah, I think that's straight. Should be. Right, so I don't think I need the I do need I do need the cutter. I do need the cutter. Okay, so that's the pieces ready. So let's put in our gusset. So because I cut this an inch wider than what I need, I can put in a half inch gusset on either side. Okay, and because I don't really want this to be too, I don't know whether to just leave it, the gussets on the side and not put one on the bottom. Yeah, I think I might do that because I don't really want to lose much more height from my pocket. So that's my gussets. And then for this piece, as I say, I don't want to lose the cursive writing here. So I think if I go at a half inch, this will be my hinge. I have to put some tape across there. Unfortunately, sometimes the, the papers rip when you take them from the, the paper pad because the glue on it is just so super strong. Okay, so we've got that and I'm just seeing, obviously this isn't going to have a gusset in it, so I'm just seeing how wide I want it to be. I said just under six, didn't I? So I think if I go there, that's it. This should be the width that I need. against each other. Hmm. I think this could do with coming in just a fraction more. I think just where I had it be, it was an odd measurement, it wasn't six inches, it was just below, so I want to, I do want to come in a bit. So yeah, sometimes, despite your measuring, <laughs> despite my measuring, you don't always get it exactly right first time. Yeah, it's better. So I want it to be inside those score marks. Yeah, perfect. <clears throat> I think that's what I'm after. Okay, so that's good. So let's just give those a little bit of a, a burnish down. Lovely. Um, so obviously I need to cover up the back of this paper. Where it says put the kettle on and where I'm going to have this flap in here um, I need to cover up this this messy hinge as well I think I will round the corners on my top flap just to give it a softer more finished edge and I don't think the blue works for me so I'm also going to cover that up and I'm going to use music sheet for that this bit should be should be big enough yeah perfect so if I use the kalal I hope it's clear what I'm doing <laughs> It's hard to know, like, because obviously this is a, you know, I don't have a prototype. This is just an idea I've got in my head as, you know, what I want to use this trash to make. So it's hard to know whether what you're saying is actually making any sense or what you're doing is making any sense. I hope it is. Okay. I'm not bothered if the music sheet ends up being upside down or anything when you lift the flap because, yeah, 
<laughs> my brain doesn't work well with things going upside down and yada 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 so I'm just gonna cut around this um, and then once again I do need to ink these pieces so I'll probably hit pause again whilst I do that just to save uh, time on the video okay so I think we can get um, this policy pocket in now um, but before I do I want to add in the policy part <laughs> um, before I forget okay so I've just got um, two scraps of Tim Holtz and these are backed onto um, Amazon uh, packaging so they're really thick um, these were just in my stash I must have been trying to use them for something else um, and then again I've got two more thick circles um, these came from Masterboard actually um, but this is just going to be you know you won't see that part so let's get some holes in all of these um, gosh <laughs> uh, please excuse my neighbours next door there we go I think they're, uh, they're here for Father's Day there we go and then hopefully I can get this middle-ish so yeah I'm gonna punch some holes just through the middle of that oh, I need my awl still and then I'm just gonna grab my brads and chew some so these are some Tim Holtz brads and I think I want to use I've got some like copper type color they look like little screws they're really cute so uh, Mandy kindly sent me these, um, my friend Mandy from Sunflowers and Doors. Um, yeah, she kindly sent them to me and uh, when I run out, I definitely, definitely want to use some more. Okay, right. So I'm just going to put these into position because I want to make sure that I'm, um, you know, getting the circles relatively in line with each other and where I want them. So I think I'm going to have this one at the top because we've got a bit of the, the yellow tape on this paper. So I think about there would be nice. <clears throat> oh, don't move it. So I'm just going <laughs> to hold that there and just stab so I can make a mark. There we are. Perfection. There we go. And we're just going to pop that through. I will have to cover the, the brad legs up with something on the back, but uh, the back is just the music sheet, um, you know, so we're free to, I don't know, do a collage or add a cluster, something. Um, definitely do something with it. Okay, let's pop that through. And then we just want to open those up. Just gonna flatten them down a bit. Cool, love it. Um, so I'm just gonna line them up again so I know where to put my other one. So I want that one about there. Again, I'm just gonna oop, stab the middle and pop that one in. And I'm doing this now because it's a lot easier to do it at this point for the pocket, you know, before um, uh, before we get, before we stick it down. Because at this point I can come in with some tape up at the back of my pocket. And I normally use framers tape. It's like masking tape, but it's quite, quite a lot stronger. Um, but equally you could just put some washi uh, or even just a little bit of paper on the back just so when you're sliding stuff in and out of your pocket nothing will catch on the back of the bread legs and whilst I've got this here I'm also going to go over this um, can you see this cut out it was where the envelope shape was um, you know the, the envelope tucked into that and I'm just gonna come along and cover this um, I will be putting a belly band over the top of this so you won't see the the tape okay and that just you know stops it from ripping or, or anything okay so I'm gonna go ahead and get this 
um, top piece glued in. Um, I added some washi to, do you remember where it ripped slightly? I just added a scrap of washi. And then I added some more to the piece so it didn't look like I was trying to um, cover anything up. You know, just make it look more intentional. And then I'm just going to stand up so I can see a little bit better. Because I just want to hold this against the, the top of the packaging. Like so. And obviously I want to make sure that I'm within my uh, spines. That's good. Okay. Right, so at this point I want to get this piece of paper in. Um, this is going to cover up my hinge. Yep, so I'm going to go ahead and glue that, but I'll use the Kalal. Um, this is just a piece of digital that I had in my stash uh, from when I did my Tim Holtz ring bound journal. Um, I'm afraid I can't remember what shop I got it from. It's not a, a shop that I use often. Um, in fact, I've only bought that one kit from them. Um, if I can find the link to it, then I will link it because it was a lovely kit. Um, it goes really well with Tim Holtz from a grungy and like scripty text type of perspective so I'm just standing up again um, and uh, yes yeah, it's, it's very very nice it's got like all a damask print and it's hints of blues but with the grunginess and although the, the backgrounds are quite similar on each page um, they've got different um, different overlays over the top so yeah it's definitely definitely worth having a look at especially if you do Tim Holtz the way that I do it, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, less less grungy than the average, shall we say. All right, let me just get these edges. Okay. And I'm just going to come in here. I don't like to go to the edge with the Kalal because it just, it gunks out everywhere and I just, I don't like, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like the feeling and, uh, and all that. Now, as you can see, you can see a little bit of my washi tape across there which I don't mind um, it was just where the the music sheet was cracking slightly uh, over the hinge so I felt like at least the washi would protect it a bit okay that's that lovely stuff so now I think we can get this pocket glued in. Okay. <clears throat> I think this is coming together quite quite nicely. Um, it feels good to get some of these Tim Holtz papers used up because I had odds and ends left over from my ring bound journal. And I don't often work with Tim Holtz. Um, it was his memoranda memoranda memorandum pad um that M mandy kindly sent me you know what i've done <laughs> i've glued those gussets i haven't glued the bottom of the pocket what an empty right let's just uh, come in here it's because it didn't have a gusset on it so i thought i'd already like glued some i don't know what i thought <laughs> i'm sure we've all done it that's it yeah, so now there's it's a roomy-ish pocket, but because we don't have the gusset at the bottom, it's not excessively roomy, um, but more roomy than if we didn't have the gussets on the side. But, you know, it just gives you a little bit of manoeuvring room. Lovely, like it. So from there, obviously, we'll tie some string, but I need to, to get out what I want. Right, belly band. So I've got this off cut from the paper we've just been using, which is not interesting. So I think we'll go with that. Now what I am wondering is whether I should be, because I don't have any more paper to cover the inside and I don't want to, you know, it's an okay brown, brown kind of colour. So what I am thinking is I might stencil. Um, just the parts that are going to be plain. Um, so, oh, I don't 
tell you what I do have. I've got my new Tim Holtz Flames stencil. Um, and I'll just do it with the tea dyed ink because that's what I've been using for the rest of it. So let's give it a go. As I say, I just think it will give it a bit more interest than if it was just plain. Obviously, I'm going to have the belly band, and the belly band can actually be further decorated. I haven't even actually started thinking about decorations yet. It's one of those things that, for me, I have to take things a step at a time. I need to see a project together before I can, you know, really understand what it is that I want. You know, I can't decorate until I see the papers together kind of thing. Now, I'm doing this a little bit lighter on this side just because um, I don't want it to be in your face. Lovely. And then let's think about this belly band. Yeah, that's just finished that off. That stenciling, I'm glad I did that. Um, right, so I'm going to round the corners of this belly band. And I've done the belly band quite wide because obviously I had to cover up that part. Um, but also, because it's quite a big panel at the back, I felt like this would then take up a bit more space. And really, so I didn't have to do as much decorating. <laughs> and that's the nice thing about the Tim Holtz papers, is where they've got quite a lot going on them, you don't really have to add much to them by means of decoration. I'll certainly add a little bit here and there, but they don't need they don't need tons. Okay, and then we're gonna glue this in as our little belly band. So I'm gonna come in a little bit of a thicker line where it's quite tall and then this will be able to have a little journal card in there or something. Now in terms of how I'm going to use this piece, um, in my head I have a file folder that it would be used used for a file folder. It could be Happy Mail, whoops, it could be standalone Happy Mail, it could be something that you pull out of the centre of the journal. It could even be sewn into a journal maybe, where we've got all sides decorated. Um, not sure if I would use it that way myself, but it, it could be used like that. I'm not, I'm not overly sure what I'm going to do with it. I like it though. Looks like, um, you know, this is kind of your, your envelope. And because we've got all that scripty text, it kind of looks like, um, you know, you're opening it up to the letters inside. Cool. All right. I'm going to hit the pause again. I just need to ink around the inside and then I need to find some, some string for there. Um, and then I will also, whilst I've got you on pause, think about... I was thinking to have an eyelet closure, which I think I am going to do. And then I probably want a little bit of decoration here and there. So I think when we come back, we'll do all of that part. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, I think I'm all set for decorating now. So um, I've already put the eyelet in. Um, so on the front, I don't want to do a ton. I just want to, I wanted to find something for this space. So I've got this sort of like airmail type sticker. And I've got a stamp because I was thinking if this was going to be, you know, because it still has an envelope shape, I thought that would be a little bit of a nod to that. So I'm going to pop those down. And then I thought I might actually add a pocket to the back. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, the back of the whole piece, I thought. Um, I think we can definitely get another another pocket in um, and I had some scraps left over from doing the inside so I thought might as well get those used as well at least some of it so that just fills in that space I don't think I need to do anything else to the front of it I've got this really cute like cottage type stamp I thought that would be a little bit of fun 
and obviously where we tie the bow the bow will be here-ish so I don't think it needs much more so this is the pocket this is just one of the scraps and again I've done the same thing as the inside where I've got the gusset I'll just cut that down a bit I've got the gusset um, on the sides but not the back and actually I kind of like that for this side because it um it allows for some room but doesn't have so much room that things will just fall out of the, the fall out of the pocket so yeah I like that for for here okay I remembered the glue on the bottom this time <laughs> all right so I'm just gonna sneak that in now I am going to be having some crochet along this spine because my paper you know didn't go the whole way around when I was doing the envelope flap so I would like to cover that up as well cute of course I do feel like maybe this one's a bit of decoration but I haven't thought that far ahead <laughs> okay uh, this is the crochet I'm going to have along the spine so I'll do that last right um Got this so I've got this bit of a blank space up here so I thought we could do something with that so I'm just gonna go with a little cluster so I've got this sort of vintage ticket thing from one of my recent ephemeral hauls it's got a really nice vintage color to it but also it's got a bit of the pink coming through like the rest of my project and I'm just going to have another ticket. This is just in my stash. Just have those layered up, thought would be interesting. Um, I've got a Tim Holtz flower, which um, I'm just going to have on it somehow. And I've got the word determined. So. I think if I have the word determined there and the flower sort of like that, I think that would look good. It's just to add a little something, it's um, nothing fancy, as they say. Just something to, to look at. Obviously once we get stuff into the pockets and everything that will, that will change the look quite a bit. And I've got some twine for my policy pocket. I think about there. There. And it's not over the top as well, it's it's subtle with those colours. So it doesn't um you know, I didn't want it to be that you open it and your your eye is instantly just drawn to that too much. Okay, right, let's finish off this policy pocket then. So as I say, I've got some twine and I've done these before, but for those of you who've not seen them, um, you slip your, your twine or your string underneath your, your top circle. Now it's a little bit fiddly at this point, just getting it in there initially, but you wanna pop that in and then you're just gonna tie a knot like so. And then you're just gonna cut off your excess. Sometimes I tie two knots, but because this is quite thick string, I don't want to add too much bulk in there. So what I'll do is I'll go around this top circle an extra time just to give it a little bit more protection, like that. And then we're just going to come down and do the same thing on the bottom where we, we wrap our string underneath the top circle at the bottom. Hopefully. <laughs> One of this, these days, I should think about gluing the bottom circle so that doesn't get in the way. But it's just where we want um, at this this first point of doing it. You need to create the space. But yeah, I think I might actually run some glue, and I'm just going to give that a glue. So I'm just going to glue the bottom circle just so that it stops getting in the way of it, because that's what I find with these things is that bottom circle can kind of get in the way when you're trying to tie the, the string around. Okay, let's um, see how we get on with that then. Might be a bit easier now. 
she says. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay, that's it. Okay, and just tie that around. Now I'm going to keep the string long. Um, that's not exactly how I'm having it, but you know, it will do for now. Um, I'm going to keep the string long because um, I'm wondering whether to attach a charm to it. I haven't quite decided, so rather than cut it off, I think I will just um, keep it long. But actually, to be fair, because this is thick twine, I don't think I'm going to go around it quite so many times. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I just had it. <laughs> Let me figure this one out. Right, got that sorted. That's just what I'm going to have there. So that's that. So at this point, I'm not going to do anything else to the inside. Um, maybe I'll add decoration in the future when I come to use this piece, but for now I'm pretty happy. So the last thing I think I'm doing is just to run that crochet along this area here. So let me just double check how that's going to look. Um, so it's just really to cover up where my paper doesn't quite um, quite go, really. Yeah, I think that's going to look pretty. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Oh, and then I've got some cream ribbon, which is going to be my, my closure. I'm just going to tie it around. Right, so let's run some glue. So I'm using the fabric glue now. I'm just dotting it on, and then I'm going to... Uh, whoops, smudge it with my finger because I don't want too much gloopiness. So we can always add more glue if we need it. This has been a fun little project, this. Let's see, I'm always glad when I can use something that would just get thrown in the bin or well in our case it gets recycled which is fine I'll keep that little piece or these pieces for um clusters um yeah it would just get recycled but you know this is way better than just popping it in the recycling bin isn't it <laughs> okay right I'm just gonna bend that around make sure I'm happy yeah nice lovely that's that. So let me get this um, closure done. So I think I probably want to wrap it around a couple of times. And obviously I want enough for a nice bow. So I don't know if I should just sort of come in like this. So I folded the ribbon over and then I'm wondering whether to just sort of tuck it in like this. I thought for a minute I hadn't clicked uh, you know, play again on the, the recording, but I have so it's fine. And I'm not going to tug too hard because obviously I don't want to, um, you know, rip the card underneath or anything. Um, and then Yeah, just tie those around. Oh, I need a little bit more ribbon. All right, let me just fuss with this. I just want to have enough to to get it round with my bow. Okay, nice bow. And then what I always do when I use ribbon for closures, tassels, etc., I just come in with a lighter and I very carefully use the heat from the flame, not the actual flame, but just the heat. And what that does is it just melts the end of the ribbon and it gives you a non, like it stops it from fraying, basically. Oh, it's really pretty. It's very vintage looking, isn't it? So that's that, so that's what we're gonna have. Obviously, I need to think of what I'm gonna put in the pockets. Um, I do feel like maybe this wants a little something. I don't really know what, but, I do have these stickers, which kind of go with the back 
paper. So I might do some kind of cluster on the back with one of these. Um, yeah, I might do. But I'm going to I'm gonna stop there because I actually need to go have my lunch and um, it's just going to be, you know, quite similar to what we've what we've done. So there you go, a little bit of, um, well essentially packaging that I got for free <laughs> has now become this cute little um, thing. <laughs> I suppose it's an ephemera holder, I guess, um, but we've got, you know, our belly band and then we've got our nice big gusseted pocket. Oh, that's funny, the, uh, the brad leg actually really blends in with the music sheet. I totally forgot about needing to cover that up, but you can't see it. So I might leave that, but I can always add a little bit of decoration. But yeah, I completely forgot about that. Um, but yeah, you can't see them. It blends in really well with that music sheet, so that's good. So we've got that, and then, yeah, I'm really glad about that stenciling. There you go. That is my project for today. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing that come together. Um, thank you ever so much for, for watching. Um, whilst I faff with my closure again. Oh, closures, they always baffle me as to what way to take the ribbon and how to do the bows and stuff. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed seeing that come together. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing with this piece. It might be something for my, my future patron, um, you know, to send out to somebody. Um, equally, it might make its way into a journal, I don't know, or a file folder or something. So, um, so yeah, thank you ever so much, and I guess we'll speak soon. Hopefully I will see you on the next video. <laughs> we got there in the end. Um, sorry about my faffing. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed seeing this piece come together, and yeah, thanks so much for watching, um, and we'll speak soon. Bye-bye for now.